Hey there everyone, Indro here and today we'll run down the creation of this trick or treat forest photoshop composition. But before that I just want to take a moment to mention that it's a real honor that my artwork got into the top 30s of Benny's spooky edit war. It feels really awesome, thank you so much. And if you want to see how I created this photoshop artwork, feel free to check the video, the link should be in the description section. Alright, let's jump into today's composition. It took about 5.5 hours for me to complete the entire artwork and I wanted to create a spooky forest where all the Halloween pumpkins come alive. We'll be using these stock images and you can find their link in the description section. So I hope you'll enjoy today's video, let's get started. So I started with placing the guy on an empty canvas and I selected him out with a quick selection tool and then I refined the edges with select and mask. Then I placed the car, I separated out the car with pen tool and created a layer mask around it. After some quick adjustments I placed the background. I tried to warp and modify the background so that it matches the camera angle to which the guy is standing on the ground and the car. I tried to match the perspectives but it was not that good so I changed it out with a different forest road and I think it has more depth to it. It has a atmospheric depth and I thought it will add up to the spookiness of the composition. I fixed the ground by patching it with the stone textures from the car image. Next it's time to place some dead trees to again add to the spookiness of the composition. After all it's Halloween themed so we need some dead trees to add up to the drama. Next goes our first floating pumpkin. I'm adding a couple of more pumpkins. I'm separating them out from the background and we'll place them into our composition so that it feels that they are hovering in the air. I'm adding some more pumpkins on the ground. Now it's time for the color grading. I used my same nighttime color grading technique to change everything into a nighttime scene. I'm using one photo filter with a blue color and cranking up the density all the way to around 90% and making sure that the preserve luminosity checkbox is not checked. Then I'm adding one hue saturation layer where I'm taking down the saturation so that the colors look a bit bleak and then I'm also using an exposure layer to make everything dark. Here I'm creating some moonbeams so that it adds up with the tall trees of the forest and creates some spooky atmosphere. I'm off to adding some mist in the distant forest. I'm also using the blend if section and I'm tweaking with the underlying layer black slider so that the mist restricts to the white layer only and we reveal parts of the black from the underneath layer so that we show some details and it looks a bit realistic. Now I'm adding the highlights, for this I chose a solid color layer with some light blue color in it and I again played with the blend if section where I again shifted the black slider towards the right so that we do not affect the black of the underlying layer and then when I paint on the layer mask with white, the highlights color only affect the whiter region. Thank you. 
Now I'm marking out the cavities of the pumpkin and will try to make them glow. I've chosen again a solid color layer with shades of dark orange, change the blending mode to linear dodge and I'll be stacking up layers of solid color with blending mode as linear dodge or color dodge and I'll be painting on the layer mask and see how it affects. So for this board, you can experiment by adding multiple layers, changing the blending mode to linear dodge and color dodge and maybe using hard light and see how it affects and see if you are getting the glow that you are looking for. Make sure to keep the color towards a darker shade, that actually works pretty good. As I fixed my color dodge highlights layer for the first pumpkin, I'm using the same layers to make the glow for the other smaller pumpkins. I'm adding some more ambient glow over the pumpkin and creating kind of a halo or a haze from the moonbeams that is coming from the top. Time to add some shadows on the pumpkin, I'm using an exposure layer and painting on the layer mask. I'm adding some highlights. Now I'm adding some highlights on the guy and since he's facing the pumpkins and his back is towards us, so we'll be only having a little rim highlight around the top edge. Not too much highlight, just a little bit of highlight. I'm creating the shadow with an exposure layer. So I have created one exposure layer below him to create the shadow on the ground and I have created another exposure layer which I have clipped it to the layer and I have painted on it to create a dark impression because light is facing in front of him and his back should look dark. I'm using the same technique to create a kind of rim highlight on the car and since a part of the car is visible to us, we can play around with it and create some additional highlights over there. Now it's time to create the rear light glow. So this is pretty fun. I have just created a solid color in the shades of dark red, changed the blending mode to color dodge and painted softly with a soft round brush on it. I'm painting the highlights on the car's body manually. I'm trying to gauge where the reflection should be and adding the highlights. Now the red light should also shine on the guy so I've created another red layer with blending mode as screen because the light should be softer over here not as harsh as the highlights on the car so I've changed the blending mode to screen I'm adding it on the guy's clothes. I've added a lens flare to create some additional effects. I was not that much satisfied with the glow of the pumpkins so I kept visiting it often and kept on tweaking it. I added the highlights on the pumpkins that will be created due to the moonbeams. I have taken a dark blue color, changed the blending mode of the layer to linear dodge and painted some highlights on it. I'm adding some additional pumpkins in the distant. I have separated out the pumpkins from the background, added a blue color cast because they will be at a distance so the color won't be that much prominent and will look faded. This will also create an atmospheric depth in our scene. I'm copying the faces of the pumpkins from the other pumpkins. I'm copying the faces and pasting them and we'll make a subtle glow on top of it. Here I'm adding some shadows 
and this will actually create some realism towards the fog and the light effect since the moonbeam is coming from the top left and there is much fog and mist in our scene so these shadows will add up to the realism. Next I'm placing a wooden signboard. I'm marking out the signboard with the pen tool and create a layer mask around it. With a quick color grading, I'll be changing the text. I'll change it to trick or treat forest and obviously enter at own risk. With this done, I added some fireflies because I thought that will add a little bit of green color onto our composition and also I placed the fireflies over the signboard so that it grabs the attention of the viewer. painting the highlights that will fall on objects from the fireflies glow. Now with that done, I created a snapshot of the entire composition, went into camera raw filter, I tweaked with the vibrance, increased it a bit, I increased the clarity and texture and boosted up the contrast a bit. Now finally, I thought something was missing and I needed to add something. So what I did was I ended up adding some green ooze coming out from the trees. I thought that will add some spookiness to the composition and I also have some glowing green gooey stuff which I can again play with the light and add some more drama to the scene. And since the application of the camera raw filter was on top of a smart object, I selected the entire artwork, created a copy, went inside the smart object, pasted it, so I do not have to apply those camera raw filters again. And it's done. I hope you liked today's artwork and more than that, I hope you found this video helpful, you got some techniques that you can apply to your own compositions. So if you're liking my videos, please feel free to subscribe the channel so that it can help me create more stuff like this. I'll see you in the next one and till then, enjoy creating.